15 years ago, I left the Diocese of Balanga in order to follow the instruction of Pope Benedict to be Archbishop of Linge and Lagupan. It has been 15 years. And tomorrow will be my anniversary of installation. In fact, I arrived in Dagupan <clears throat> on the 2nd of November, which was All Souls Day. For the past 15 years, I have celebrated births and deaths. For the past 15 years, I have officiated at baptisms and weddings, but also at anointings of the sick and funerals, many funerals. But in between those births and deaths, in between those baptisms and funerals, what was I doing? The past 15 years have been years of dying. They have been years of offering self. They have been years of killing even. Killing not others, but killing the evil within me, killing the pride within me, killing the impatience within me, killing the dishonesty and hypocrisy within me, it is always a day of killing and dying to self. In the human reckoning, the 15th year is sometimes called the crystal year. In the same way that silver is 25 and 50 is golden, 15 is called Crystal Jubilee. What is crystal? Crystal has many forms. For example, a precious gem is called crystal, but salt is also crystal. What does crystal have to teach us? For me as a bishop and for us as followers of the Lord. Three things. The first about crystals is crystals are never formed, never formed without fire. The hard crystals are formed because of volcanic fire. The softer crystals like salt are born because of evaporation, because of that big ball of fire that is called sun. In other words, there are no crystals without fire. In the same way that there are no Christians without trials. Because convenience and comfort are very bad teachers. Because the most important lessons in life we learn under fire. We learn under trial. We learn under difficulty. We learn in darkness. That is why we should always be grateful for life's trials. Because life's trials do not kill us. They only make us better. Crystals are formed by fire. And Christians are formed by trials. Christians are born from the cross of Calvary. The second quality of crystals is that crystals have no tongue. They have no lips. They have no voice. Crystals are always silent. In fact, you might see crystal lying on the soil. It will not say, look at me, I'm a crystal. No, you might even step on it and it will not bind because crystals do not talk. The language of crystals is silence. And there are beautiful lessons that only silence can teach us. That is why St. Francis saying, sending the friars would mandate them. Go and preach the gospel. Use words if necessary. Because the most important component of preaching is silent witnessing. Silence has a message that no words can convey. 
and the deeper and higher messages can only be delivered in the mystery of silence. So, the first about crystals is they are always born from fire. The second about crystals is that they are always in silence. They do not talk. But the third about crystals is once you have discovered them and you see their beauty and luster, even if it is as simple as crystal salt, they are beautiful and they are used as decors. In fact, in the altar, in the tabernacle, we use crystals in order to decorate the house of God. In the Old Testament, crystals were also attached to the armors of soldiers. Crystals were attached to the precious vessels in the temple because crystals are beautiful. Crystals make things more beautiful. Look at those three words. Crystals are born from trial. Crystals remain silent. And crystals are destined to bear witness to beauty. Trials, silence, beauty. If you put together these three words, these three words spell what the gospel says. What does the gospel say? Love. The greatest commandment is love. But love is not Valentine's. Love is not Cupid with his arrow. Because the perfect symbol of love is Christ crucified on the cross with his heart pierced. In other words, the perfect day of love is not February 24. The perfect day of love is Good Friday, when they attempted to kill love, but love rose again from the dead. Love is silence, and, best ex and love is best expressed in the silence of our hearts. Look at lovers. They say, I love you. They give gifts. They give time. But love is best expressed when you look at each other and you look at the same direction, which no words can contain, no words can express. Because love is best expressed in the silence of sacrifice. Finally, beauty. You want to be beautiful? You don't need to go to the beauty parlor for that. You don't need to go to the plastic surgeon for that. All you need to do is to be a loving person because love makes all of us beautiful. Love is beautiful. Love is silence. Love is tested by fire. Today, I thank the Lord for sending me to the Archdiocese of Linge and the Gupan. When the Pope told me I was to go to Dagupan to be Archbishop here, I said to the representative of the Pope, I don't know anyone there. But on second thought, I said, I only know one woman, the woman in Manawag. And I said to the Pope, I think that is enough. I know somebody there. That is enough for me. I will go. And the past 15 years have been years of listening to the voice of the lady, to the voice of the mother who calls. If 15 years is crystal here, it is because the mother in Manawag has taught me to face trials with courage, to be comfortable with silence, and to add beauty to this world. Because in the end, it is beauty that will be our salvation. I look forward to silver, to golden, to forever. And we will grow all together serving the Lord. And beyond old age and beyond elderly years, we know that is life everlasting. 
and the voice will no longer be a voice. The, Lord, the voice will now become visible with our eyes. At the right time, in the Lord's time, may we see the face of that voice who calls us to follow Jesus. Thank you for crystals. Thank you for trials. Silence, thank you. Beauty, thank you. And make us apostles of Jesus. Amen.